but it's like a, uh, just when I think I know where I'm going, there's another fork in the trail. So let's figure this out real quick. There we go. So, we evaded those people. So, food for the PCT. So, long story short, I don't really know what I'm doing for food. I know what I want to do and what I plan on doing, but it's really going to depend on resupplies. So, uh, it's going to be a lot of ramen, a lot of granola bars, uh, probably a lot of couscous, um, a lot of oatmeal, probably going to be some spam mixed in there, and yeah, I don't really know. It's really going to depend on what's available to me uh, at resupplies. So. I can tell you what I did on the Appalachian Trail. Oh man. Where does this go? Oh, this down there. Okay. So the Appalachian Trail. So I went through like a few pretty distinct food phases on the AT and I'm gonna try and not recreate that on the PCT. I'd like to eat a little more healthy and a little more consistently. I lost a lot of weight on the Appalachian Trail. Um, I ended up losing 60 pounds and it was not a healthy 60 pounds. I was extremely malnourished by the end. Um, but, so what I did was I started off with like regular trail food, like ramen, granola bars, I don't really remember what I did for breakfast because I don't think I was eating oatmeal at that point, but uh, probably granola bars, trail mix, you know, chips. I was doing a lot of, uh, I caught back up to those people, so I'm gonna slow down for a second. Um, um, the heck was I saying? Oh, there's more people. I don't know if I want to be following these people for the next however long. Um, well, I kind of wanted to go down that trail anyway, so let's go do that. Let's go this way. Um, oh yeah, instant mashed potatoes, like the Idaho and instant mashed potatoes. Um, I got sick of those real quick. I even was like mixing in Fritos at one point. Um, so yeah, initially I had a stove, it's doing like your pretty typical backpacking food. Um, I got sick of a lot of that. I ended up going, I don't think completely no cook, but I was doing basically no cook with some ramen mixed in here and there uh, every so often after like maybe a month or so. Um, and for the next, I don't really remember the timelines of any of this. I just remember there was like three phases. So the second phase was kind of just like no cook with some ramen mixed in. Um, a lot of granola bars, a lot of protein bars. There was a little while where I pretty much ate nothing but protein bars. Um, and I got pretty sick of that. And when I ended the trail eating, and what I was eating, I think for probably the last month and a half or so, was uh, Soylent with instant coffee for breakfast, granola bar with a handful of almonds for lunch, and cold co uh, cold soaked couscous for dinner. And I actually really liked it. Like that was. Like, I enjoyed that diet, but it was not enough to sustain me. Um, 
and I was feeling it by the end. So I'm going to try and not let myself get into that routine again. I'm going to try and eat healthier on the PCT. Um, I, think, I think that's the way it just went. So I'm going to try and eat healthier. Maybe not even healthier, just make sure I'm getting enough calories. I definitely want to lose weight on that trip, but not to the same extent I did on the Appalachian Trail. So. Um, yeah, as far as like food prep and how I'm going to deal with that, um, I don't think I'm going to cook anything that needs anything more than just hot water to cook. So what I plan on doing is getting like a mountain house meal or something with uh, like one of those backpacking meals with a bag that I can reuse and I'll just kind of use that as a soaking bag so I don't have to actually cook anything in my pot. Because um, cleaning your pot kind of sucks. You got to reheat up some water, shake it out a little bit. And I don't mind doing that on shorter trips because I'm not worried about going through fuel. But on the PCT when the fuel has to last and even on the AT, I tried not to actually cook anything in my pot. It was just for boiling water. And that works out pretty well. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. Um, the Soylent, like eating Soylent, if that was more widely available, I would totally do that again, but it's not. You can get like the drinks at Walmart, but you can't get the powder. So I'm not going to do that again, just because of the logistics. Um, what else? Oh yeah, oatmeal. So I pretty much hate oatmeal. Oh man, I'm at a four way. I'm going to go this way. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go this way. Um, I pretty much hate oatmeal, but I hate it a lot on trips this summer and I actually don't know that I really hate it anymore. I got kind of used to it and I can always eat it dry. It's usually cooking it that kind of makes me not really enjoy it. Um, and eating it dry is just kind of like eating a stale granola bar. So i uh, probably do oatmeal for breakfast. Um, I don't think I'm going to do a cooked lunch very often, but if I do, it will most likely just be ramen. And then I'm going to do ramen for dinner. And I don't plan on sustaining myself on Mountain House Meals, but there's a lot of like different backpacker meals available now, so I'm sure I'll try a few on the way, but that's not going to be a regular thing. That'll be like... If my bag gets nasty and I need to replace it, I'll get another meal, like backpacking meal for the bag. But that's pretty much the only time I'll eat those. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Uh, man, these trails go all over the place. I have no idea where I am. I would like to add, uh, before anybody suggests it, tuna. I almost forgot about this, so I tried it like a week ago. Um, and I'll let you know what I thought about it there, so, you know, roll film, I guess. Let's mash that all in there. But up until that point, the last time I had tuna, I think was, I think it was like 2018. And I stopped eating it, well, until I tried it again, because uh, when I had it then, it was on a backpacking trip, and I almost threw up for like a couple hours straight. I was just trying to hold down this tuna. And 
It's kind of weird because I've been on a sardine kick lately, so I'm not sure why tuna grosses me out so much, but I don't think it would if it was like, you know, just a piece of tuna, but the tuna packets uh, that a lot of people get for backpacking. I can't do it, man. I tried. It's not quite as bad as it was last time I ate it. Uh, 2018 I think where I almost threw up but it was not something I could see myself eating more of so tuna's off the table um, and just to add to that it's not very calorie dense either like I know it has a lot of good stuff in it like omegas and crap uh, but the calories are extremely low like I think like the average packet is probably like 30 calories an ounce, which is not very good. So anyway, just wanted to add that little tidbit because it's been mentioned to me a lot, not necessarily here, but like in general over the years and I can't do it. So yeah, that's my tuna story. So anyway. Man, these trails are really nice. I kind of wish I found out about these earlier. Um, it's just at a local park. But, um, you can ride your bike on these too. I don't know that I would make a point to come here to ride. I think the trails would be, you know, not that exciting. Um, but you can, so that's cool. So anyway, yeah, I wish I could give you a better answer on food. Like, I don't have a set, like, diet I'm going to try to follow. I don't, like, I'm not planning meals. I'm just kind of winging it, and that's how the entire hike is really going to go. Um, aside from, like, the actual travel to and from the trail, I really am not planning anything uh, about the hike, so... Yeah, I think that's going to do it. There's not really much else to say about food, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.